I can't speak Yoruba. It's really embarrassing to me. I really wish, you know, because of my years here, everyone would just speak English to me. So I wish I spoke more. But yeah, so yeah. yeah. Ola Tunde, that's my first name. It was yeah. announced on Twitter this morning that Rita Ora is getting married. Huh? Rita Ora, your ex, getting married. Are you happy for her? I didn't. No one told me this. Hmm. Yes, her, her new fiance is a big star. Do you think she moved on from you because she was looking for someone more successful? No. Well, I got to come home because this is my home. You know, I was actually spent most of my childhood here before the age of 10. And since then, I've been trying to find more reasons to come back. And I don't know, it's an exciting time, I think, for the Nigerian film industry. Uh... You know, I don't know, I guess there's a long version of the story and a short version of the story. I guess the short version is that my agent sent me this audition. They sent me the sides and I read the script and if I like it, then I say, okay, I'll, I'll agree to audition for it. And there are a number of people involved who I really respect and love. Um, one of them is Reed Morano, who is the director of it, who was the, uh, the director of photography on another series I did for HBO. So I was like, wow, this is really exciting. So I put myself on tape for it and uh, they liked it. And so they just called me over and that was it. Yeah, you know, I, I think w w when you have really talented writing staff and production team and a great, uh, you know, great producers behind it, you've always got a chance of, you know, making something that hits the zeitgeist and excites people's imagination. But I think with the election of Donald Trump and things like Brexit and other things which really made people think about what are the potential of extreme governments or governments which kind of really take countries in a different direction. I think that really excited the imaginations of people. Yeah, I think absolutely. There are so many places that Handmaid's Tale resonates with what's going on with us right now. But, um, but also, you know, the, the issues of inequality between men and women, these are long-standing issues, millennia worth of issues. And um, so I think the book, Margaret Atwood's book, The Handmaid's Tale, it, it will resonate almost at any time if you opened it and had a look at it. And it just so happens we still live in one of those times. Oh my God. Is that what this has all been about? Her. Wow, your breath is really strong. Look, no, you're already a star. You've got your book. You've got all of this. Um. Working with Elizabeth Moss was really tiring. She's she's not that talented. She's a very boring person. I'm messing around. She's she's extraordinary, really. She's one of the best actresses I've ever worked with, and um and she's also just funny. You know, we just we laugh so much because when it's dark, you know, when the subject matter is so dark, you need to kind of lighten it up. So we had lots of jokes. You know, I think um, it's, it's inspiring, really, because you have people who are creating extraordinary pieces of, of, of work with sometimes finite resources, and, and really you're just seeing the quality and quantity as well just increase you know, piece by piece. And I really want to make a, do, be a part of that as well. I'm a filmmaker as well as an actor, and so um, I'm really looking forward to opportunities to contribute. Well, I've got to say, I mean, I was hanging out the other day with one of my favorite Nigerian actors, who is uh, a guy called Nonso Anozie. And uh, Nonso is a very fantastic actor. He's working currently in an American series called Zoo. Um, and he's just really fantastic. And of course, um, I have a, another friend of mine called Wale Ojo who um, I did one of my very first play with, and uh, he's, he does lots of, of work both here and back in England. Well, you know, here's a bit of fan trivia, is I, um, I went to school with Tiwa Savage. With, oh. Yeah. So 
Yeah, we, we, I mean, like from the age of 11 to 15, we used to sit next to each other at school. And so, um, so it's really wonderful watching her, you know, shine. But the other thing that I've been really excited about is my brother, Daps, um, makes music videos. And he's been making music videos. Yeah, he's nominated for, you know, uh, music video awards, MTV awards across the board. He does all of Migos' music videos. And so, um, you know, very often he works with my other brother, Luti, who exec produces these. So... Um, in terms of the music, whenever I think about that, I think about what my brother's doing. And um, outside of that, also, my brother, uh, Rockwell, is a music producer. So, so I really, my, I'm a fan of my family, so I guess that's where I start. I don't know, grace maybe is a big part of it. I, I, you know, I, I really think Nigerians are very extraordinarily talented people. You know, we have the first African Nobel laureate. We have so many uh, ways that we're kind of front runners. And we're also such a large diaspora. So that gives us statistical advantage as well. Well, what I'm really excited about at the moment is um, Along with my brother, I'm producing, directing, and writing, and starring in my own television show called Max, M-A-X-X-X-X, -X -X -X, three X's. And, um, and so you can go and check it out on YouTube. If you put in right now on YouTube, Max, or maybe my name, Fag Ben Lee, Max, uh, they'll come up with these really funny comedies that we've, we've uh, been producing for Channel 4. And so we're going to be making more of those, and those are going to go international, so I'm really excited about that. So um, my dad, Tunde Fagbinli, um, is known uh, a lot for being a columnist on Sunday Punch. And, um, and he met my mom while my mom was studying out here. My mom's English and part Irish. And so, yeah, they come from Ibadjo, which is just outside of Ibadan. And uh, yeah, so that's my Nigerian heritage. Eba Okro. <laughs> yeah, the first thing I did within 45 minutes of landing, I was like, take me, <laughs> take me to get some food. So yeah, yeah, I love Nigerian food so much. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I played basketball and I was a musician. I played saxophone and some other instruments and I was also acting. And so I was doing lots of different things, but I think I was just better at acting than I was at other things. And then um, I, I actually had committed myself to go and study economics at university. And um, I was very happy to do that. I was very interested in the subject. And um, so I couldn't act in the school play at the time. So I said, look, I'll help out with the lighting. It was no, no problem. So I was doing the light, and I just was like, I love being part of the theater. I love being part, no matter what part of it I'm in. I just, so I came home that day and I said to my mom, look, I think I want to try and go to drama school. And so she said, okay, so let's try it. So I got into one of the best drama schools in England. And then from there, to be honest, my passion, for some people, they, I think they're born with like a, a knowledge of what they want and who they want to be. For me, I think it was a process of discovery and also through committing to my art, my love grew. My biggest moment ever. You know, it's funny because I was talking to my little brother about this the other day, you know, the difference between being goal oriented and process oriented that, you know, I think for some people, the idea of acting is to achieve this. I'm a Hollywood status or I've made 10 million, you know, and I think as much as possible, I try and encourage myself to be more process oriented that it's more about being in the moment than committing yourself to the process of excellence and connecting with other people. And so, with that kind of mindset, there isn't so much of a hierarchy of moments. I mean, there are lots of them, which, lots of beautiful moments that stand out to me, but I, I don't know if I could pick one. Immediately. <laughs> Hi, this is OT Fag Benley, and you're watching Pulse TV.
Welcome to First View Luxury Hotel. At First View Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, poor air condition, free international calls, free time pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit First View Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Nirobar Mishile off Raja Rasaki Road, First Estate, Amuwo, or the First Start Legion. For more information or reservation, please call us on 080-75-78-7135 or 080-99-90-0601. You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.forcevhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Forcevhotel Hotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.